Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk. It's a great honor to be here with our Mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Anthony Mizetich. Great Thank to see you. Thank Great you. to have you, you here. And of course, you're here always to update our community and the residents about everything that's happening in our city. We've got lots to talk about because there's so much going on. Um, this just for starters, I just wanted to focus on um, what was certainly major news in the community was the week-long search for that missing diver off the coast. It was a tragic situation. Um, but now, after all this has happened, I'm wondering, as mayor, how you feel our local authorities, the sheriff's department, handled the situation, and if in fact the city had any role when all this was going on. Well, thank you, Liz. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you back. Oh, well, thank you. After a long absence here <laughs> from uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah. Uh, you're back in the chair and uh, ready to go. It feels good to be back. Uh, in, in regards to the unfortunate situation where the uh, the lady lost her uh, lost her life uh, while uh, snorkeling. I just want to say that our first responders, the LA County Sheriff's Department and the LA County Fire Department were, were wonderful, um, you know, as far as responding. They did their search both with divers and with uh, helicopter search and with vessels. Uh, they looked for her, uh, they couldn't find her, of course, and it was very unfortunate that um, she didn't. She didn't lose her life, mm -hmm. um, but th I think they did everything they could in searching for her and trying to to locate her. Right. So the city just sort of was was here if they needed to assist, but didn't need to, in a sense. Or... No. Our, our city. Our city offered uh, the uh, parking lot lower uh, down and uh, near the beach there right. to so they can pool their resources and and have uh, vehicles and and that kind of thing uh, for the search. And uh, we also had a. Um, room here once the lady was found uh, mm -hmm. for the family to uh, to um, talk to the family but right. it was it's just a sad thing it's it very was an unfortunate, unfortunate thing. situation and for me yeah. as living along PV Drive South and watching news trucks going by every day and that whole thing and one thing no matter what happens within this case it always brings to mind like the coast is so beautiful but it's also you have to be safe and certainly one thing is like I said to my kids when this was happening you never go in the water alone as well I don't know what happens particularly but just sort of there was sort of that talk that maybe she well was yeah I mean that that could this could be a lesson for for other people right. I mean I know as a former scuba diver that you have a dive buddy mm -hmm. you always got to have somebody with you uh, especially when you're in the ocean and, and diving uh, either scuba or skin diving to just make sure that you don't get into trouble because it's right. very easy to get in trouble Absolutely. in the ocean. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to move on to uh, some other really pressing and important things happening in the city. And, um, and that is just uh, recently there's been sort of, it looks like we need discussion and talk about the Portuguese Bend slide area. There was a workshop held. And just over, like, what are some of the solutions maybe that in terms of dealing with the slide and the impact it has with the that PV Drive South stretch of road, which I call the bumpy road, <laughs> and uh, how can we, uh, how can you, how can the city deal with this? Well, my family is <laughs> what do you always call called it? that a bumpy road. Okay, it's called so. the bumpy road. I <laughs> That's thought, how we always knew that. It is that know, where it is. <laughs> I know. I said to the station manager here, Mark. I said, "Do you call it the bumpy road? Because we drive the bumpy road every day to get to here at City Hall." So. <laughs> well, you, you know the. Uh, the workshop was, I think, uh, very appropriate to help educate the council on what is going on uh, with that with that area. Uh, you know, Rancho Palos Verdes is not uh, uh, a place where we are not unaware of landslides. Right. I mean, we certainly have our share of landslides, um, and the city is is looking to do things uh, for those various landslides. And, you know, San Ramon is a you know a case in point. But as far as the Portuguese landslide, there are a lot of different thoughts and ideas on how to best address that. Uh, none of them are um, very cheap. Right. Uh, they're they're all expensive fixes, and it's it's such. I believe it's the largest landslide in the U.S. That's right. I think I also read it's the largest continuous landslide in the country. So. Yeah. It is, I think the headline on the PV News said, trying to tame a beast. I mean, it really is. And really, can you tame it or just sort of 
mellow it. <laughs> well, I know that uh, in this year's budget, we uh, did approve a, an, a new watering, dewatering well for the, the landslide area. And I think that the dewatering wells are one of the key solutions to that. They're not cheap. And uh, there have been dewatering wells there before. However, because of the landslide, a lot of the, the piping has been sheared. And so um, we got to look at uh, possibly, you know, adding more of those dewatering wells. That's for the water at the top of the landslide. And, it, and those wells do remove a lot of water. I mean, tens of thousands of gallons a day. The other aspect of the landslide is the tow. Now, the tow is affected by the ocean. Right. And so there have been some proposals and ideas by some in our community. Um, in fact, one uh, former council member or mayor um, suggested that we do some type of artificial reef to maybe uh, bridge the wave action and reduce it so there's not a lot of uh, uh, waves hitting on the shore mm -hmm. and, and undermining that, that toe of the landslide. Right. And then, you know, once you undermine the toe, it just keeps sliding down. Mm -hmm. And so some type of artificial reef could be a solution. Now, there's many Fix things... Fix the toe of the bluff is very yeah, expensive. Yeah, I but there's many things that go into it. There's, there's EPA uh, assessments and engineering assessments and that, other, that kind of thing that have to go into uh, the equation. But, you know, those are some of the ideas that we're, that we're looking at to uh, possibly uh, deal with the situation because it's, number one, it's not going to be a cheap fix. Number two... Uh, it is, is on a grand scale, and so it's, it's going and, to take a lot of resources. And when you had that, when the workshop was held, I'm sure it was obviously, you looked at the history of that slide, mm -hmm. which what pretty much for our viewers that are watching that aren't familiar, I think, was it like, they, I think that like it's been 100 years, it's about 2012, they kind of recognized there was a slide, and then it was in the 50s where... It was the, in the middle 50s that, that it, it became uh, a real I think, problem. Uh, they during got the construction reactivated. of Prince Shaw uh, Boulevard okay. that actually uh, triggered that. Right. And, and then and it started slipping. Okay, and then since then, I mean, homes were lost. There was a lot of damages yes. and lawsuits and all that. And so since that time in the 50s, the city, well, since the city has been incorporated, they have been just doing what just to mitigate? They've been just repatching the road down there and just, like you said, doing Well, like I said, we had, certain measures. We had uh, in the history the of the wells. city, I, I, there was pylons put in originally, and those uh, maybe lasted a few months before they gave way and got right. pushed all the way down to the ocean. I, I guess you can find remnants uh, today down on, down on the Portuguese Bend Beach. Right. Then we put in the dewatering wells. Well, you know, as, as movement continued on, a lot of the shafts of those dewatering wells got, got sheared. Um, so, you know... There's been lots of little things that have... A lot of little things, and then, of course, we're fixing the road. Constantly. Consistently. And when it rains, we have to fix the road more than not. Okay. Yeah. And I think I read, is it about a half a million dollars a year that the city spends on sort of... About approximately grading half or a million paving dollars a year that? on repaving the PV drive side. And on top of the county has another half a million, I think I read, the expense of dealing with the pipeline that goes along the road. Is that, well, does that make sense? Well, yeah, and I mean, we have, we have pipeline expenses as well. Okay, so, so there you, you go. Know, a, so, lot, a lot of it's tied into what we're, what we're doing. Right, and when you look at this issue, do you think you'll ever really understand the slide? I mean, is there really a way? Everybody, I think you get three different geologists in a room and they might say, sort of, how do you really understand it to fix it? Well, or, you have to slow it down. That is the bottom line. Slow you it have down. to slow down the the creep down down the slope because everything in this world is based on gravity. gravity. Yeah, so, I know that. So <laughs> you have to go ahead and, like I said, take the water out of the the top of the slide, and then do something to uh, prevent the toe of the slide from being undermined. Okay. And we know that the strongest force on the planet is the ocean, so it's taming that. So the city council now, after sort of having this workshop and there were some presentations made about some solutions, what's the next step? What do you see that will happen now? Well, I think there's further, uh, you know, uh, study to be done on it and coming up with, uh, you know, the right type of fixes and, and seeing what the costs are going to be. Uh, I, I, believe, I believe that more dewatering wells will, you know, help slow down the top of the slide. We just have to find a way in how we're going to deal with, with the toe of the slide. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, uh, going to require, I think, study to make sure that we have the best solution available and technology that we have available 
to us at the time. Because at the, you know, was it maybe 40 years ago they put in those pylons? Well, that was the best technology that they thought at the time, but they sure didn't last very long. Right. And as the mayor, do you get feedback from the community? This is really important that this is, that this gets addressed. Well, I think the residents are very concerned about uh, that, the landslide, especially the residents in Portuguese Bend and the residents that have to travel that road right. every day. Like I mean, me. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, it gets paid over. It's really nice. And, the, you know, the, the next week you go over it and it starts to get little bumps in it again. Right. And so, uh, you know, I think there's, there is concern from the residents. All right. I've got Terranea, I've got Tromps, this is a beautiful stretch. Right. And then... right. We want to make sure that we're, you know, taking care of the, that road. And, you know, it's very important artery through our, through right. our city. They just repaved it and they were just doing a lot of work down there. And right now it's smooth. I will never say it will never be smooth sailing, but. Well, we can slow down the landslide. We can possibly, you know, uh, have more longevity with the what we do on the road and maybe the intervals that we use to or the intervals that we uh, do the road fixing will diminish mm -hmm. to maybe we're, we're only fixing it maybe once every two or three years Great. rather than maybe twice a year exactly yeah. anything you want to add on that one particular subject that I didn't bring up that you think is relevant or you think was sort of kind of to give viewers an overview and our residents about. Well, I, I just want to assure the residents that it is a concern of our, our, our city, and uh, I know city staff, city manager, the council are, are very concerned about uh, Portuguese Bend, and uh, we're looking looking for solutions. Right, cost-effective ones for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know there's been some, some suggestions out there, but... Uh, uh, possibly like a, a bridge or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I was mentioning but, earlier before we but started. But the, the cost of that is so prohibitive that right. I don't, it's not a viable solution. Okay, well, I appreciate you working on that as someone that lives on PV Drive South myself. Um, let's move on. One thing um, it's always important is this show allows for you to communicate with the residents and, and to talk about what the council is working on. And I was happy to receive an email. I got your newsletter and uh, that you've just started this. And so you'll be doing these kind of maybe, you know, from time to time to update. Yeah, every quarter. So yeah. you kind of look, I got, when I got it, it sort of looked at your goals as mayor and the city goals. And I'm just wondering if you wanted to sort of update what some of those goals might be and what you're working on um, right now. Well, I think it was important for the new council to come in and uh, develop goals. And I was very pleased to see that our, our new council members uh, jumped on board and wanted to go ahead and do that as a, and have goals as a council. I, I believe that um, the number of goals that we put forth are a, uh, a good measurement for this council and worthy goals that I believe that the community will, would embrace and does embrace. Uh, 